Lord. Grace and peace to you, friends, and welcome to worship with First Presbyterian Church of Warren on this third Sunday of Advent. I welcome you if you've been here many times before or if this is your first time gathering with us in this way. We welcome you. This week, we turn to Luke's writing, which is an account in two acts, the gospel biography of Jesus and then the story of the early church the Jesus community, the book of Acts, which we're studying right now in our Bible study. Whether you were a Jew or Gentile in those days, deciding to become part of this illegal early Christian movement could bring punishment for your allegiance. Surely the message in both Luke and Isaiah that the downcast, lowly, and oppressed would rise up is a welcome and inspirational account. Like the Jewish exiled people of Isaiah's time and like the early Christians, we also sometimes wonder where God is in our suffering. And we long to hear the promise that a reason for joyful praise is the good news on the way. I believe in God, even when God is silent. The loneliness of fear, the invisibility of the next step, the yearning for presence. Holy One, we thank you for the glimpses we catch of your gift of the depths of joy. Even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle, even when we are not sure of your presence, ignite the flame of joy within us that we may glow with its brilliance from the inside out. Help us face the silence of unknowing and embrace it as the pregnant pause before joyful new beginnings. Amen. I'd invite you to light your Advent candle at home, or if you have another candle that you have been lighting during these weeks, I'd invite you to light it now. Our opening hymn is to a maid whose name was Mary.
Friends, may the peace of Christ be with you all. I'd invite you to unmute yourself or to share a word of peace in the chat. The peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Good morning. Peace. Good morning. Peace to all. Love you. <laughs> I'd invite um, our the children of the church to come close to the screen. Um, we have a special time with children this morning. Isaac uh, created this video for us. And um, we have been doing a lot of waiting in our house. I don't know about you, but we're waiting for a lot of things, but especially for Christmas. Um, we've been doing some things while we're waiting. We have the paper chain from the Advent bag. We've been taking off the chain each day. We've been lighting our Advent candles. Um, we have been waiting a lot. So this is a message from Isaac about waiting. You know, there are a lot of things in life I wait for. For example, dough rising. Sometimes I like making bread. Well, my mom makes the bread, I eat it. But anyway, Beetlejuice exploding. Beetlejuice is a star in Orion's belt. And it's like about to explode and I'm like, when? End of coronavirus. I could go around licking people's doorknobs. Well, maybe not that one, but snow for sledding. I love sledding in the snow, just like a fresh wave of snow. Going to summer camp. Camp Westminster is one of my favorite places to go. Christmas presents. Do I even need to say anything about that? What are you waiting for? Sometimes it's hard to wait, right? But waiting helps you appreciate what you're waiting for. So you can get ready for what's coming. For example, you could, um, practice your saying guys you shouldn't have when they uh when it's like on your surprise birthday party and your surprise christmas face some things you can do while waiting is to use your imagination love your brother or sister my parents made me say that or help your parents but anyway, happy waiting and Merry Christmas. Bye. Well, thank you, Isaac, for that enlightening message about waiting and what we can do while we wait. Um, it's not only what we can do, but how we how we act while we're waiting, right? We can wait with kind of sadness or uh, just feeling down, or we can try, we can try to find an opportunity to wait with joy. The things that we talked about with the Advent, right? We can wait with joy and hope and love and peace. And if we wait in those ways, uh, it might help right? It's not just about what we're waiting for, but about how we wait. 
And so thank you, Isaac, for sharing that message with us today. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you that when we're waiting for all sorts of things, that you wait with us, that you join us wherever we're at, whether we are sad or joyful or hopeful or not so hopeful. We thank you that you meet us where we are in our waiting. Amen. Our first reading this morning uh, is comes from the book of Isaiah. We've been following Isaiah the prophet, and this is chapter 57. It will be said, survey, survey, build a road, remove barriers from my people's road, the one who is high and lifted up, who lives forever, whose name is holy, says, I live on high in holiness and also with the crushed and the lowly, reviving the spirit of the lowly, reviving the heart of those who have been crushed. I won't always accuse, nor will I be enraged forever. It is my own doing that their spirit is exhausted. I gave them breath. I was enraged about their illegal prophets. I struck them in rage. I withdrew from them, yet they went on wandering wherever they wanted. I have seen their ways, but I will heal them. I will guide them and reward them with comfort. And for those who mourn, I will create a reason for praise, utter prosperity to those far and near, and I will heal them, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Each week we are presenting a musical piece that one of our soloists worked on this fall in preparation to fill our worship with music and our dark nights with the light of joy. What a gift this has been when we were afraid we would have no music this Advent. We have also been witnessing the power of music through documentaries that open us to, to lives transformed by the presence of instrument and song. <clears throat> For this moment, we present to you a rallying call, Mary's Magnificat, which we will hear in our gospel reading today. She lifts her voice and says that God will show mercy and lift up the lowly. This song cries out with the hope that the world is about to turn.
Thank you, Renee and June, for your faithful ministry of music this morning. Our gospel reading is the beginning of Luke's gospel. We've been through Matthew and Mark, and now we come to Luke. And so let us hear these familiar words. Maybe we can try to do it as if we're hearing them for the first time. Luke writes, many people have already applied themselves to the task of compiling an account of the events that have been fulfilled among us. They used what the original eyewitnesses and servants of the word handed down to us. Now, after having investigated everything carefully from the beginning, I have also decided to write a carefully ordered account for you, most honorable Theophilus. I want you to have confidence in the soundness of the instruction you have received. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, don't be afraid, Mary, God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever and there will be no end to his kingdom. Then Mary said to the angel, how will this happen since I haven't had sexual relations with a man? The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come over you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's son. Look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son. This woman who was labeled unable to conceive is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible for God. Then Mary said, I'm the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said. And the angel left her. Mary got up and hurried to a city in the Judean highlands. She entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. With a loud voice, she blurted out, God has blessed you above all women and he has blessed the child you carry. Why do I have this honor that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Happy is she who believed that the Lord will fulfill the promise he made to her. And Mary said, with all my heart, I glorify the Lord in the depths of who I am. I rejoice in God, my savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored because the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He shows mercy to everyone from one generation to the next who honors him as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty handed. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy, just as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham, and to Abraham's descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Kevin, if you're able to spotlight, that would be great. What is a song that has kept you going this year? What is a song that has kept you going this year? Oh, I see Eddie raising his hand. Eddie, you want to share? You have a song? Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells has kept you going this year. That's awesome. So I'm wondering if you all can write, um, maybe someone in the chat can write, what is a song that has kept me going this year? And then you all can answer in the chat, either on Zoom or in Facebook. That would be awesome. 
So that was one of the questions that I posted on my Facebook page the other night. And I got about 60 replies from friends across uh, my different communities. I've got high school friends and college seminary, and even some of you responded. It was a question that apparently struck a chord, pun intended. <laughs> My friends um, also apparently have very diverse taste in music that keeps them going. And answers ranged across uh, the board and was everything from Amazing Grace and Until We, uh, God Be With You Until We Meet Again, to songs by Lizzo and BTS and a group I haven't heard of before called The Mountain Goats. And some of uh, your past pastors even chimed in. Ann Schaefer shared the song, What Doesn't Kill You Makes You Stronger by Kelly Clarkson. And Emma Nickel shared a song by a musical couple, the Bengsons, who wrote and performed the Keep Going On song at the start of the pandemic. And it was recorded at one of their parents' homes uh, in Dayton, Ohio, I think, where they fled with their three-year-old when things started shutting down in March. The song and the video became a huge internet hit. Maybe some of you have seen it. And it is packed with hilarity and vulnerability that'll leave the tears streaming down your cheek if you are in one of those pandemic moods. Um, here's one of the, I guess it's a verse for lack of a better word. Uh, they, they say, let's bring some joy into the room. Why not? We could try it. We could try it. Or some rage and some grief and relief. Ooh, whoa, I hold my rage. I pray my rage is a fire that cleans my mind out and makes me ready to listen. I pray my pain is a river that flows to the ocean that connects my pain to yours. And I pray, I pray my happiness like pollen that flies to you and pollinates your joy. Oh boy. Oh boy, is that possible? I don't know. I don't know. We're making this up as we go. We have to make this up as we go. The keep going song, the keep going on song. Oh, we're making it up. We're making it up as we go. Keep going, keep going, keep going on, keep going on song. The keep going on song. What song has kept you going during this year? I see a lot in the chat, which is awesome. Mary was going to need a song to keep her going. Luke tells us that Mary had received the prophetic call of all prophetic calls from God. The story of Gabriel coming to Mary takes the standard form of prophets receiving their call in scripture. There's the call the task, that is what they've been called to do, the objection, the, but I can't do this, I'm to fill in the blank. And in Mary's case, she's pretty upfront with Gabriel about her lack of sexual relations. And after the objection comes the reassurance, though the way the Holy Spirit stirs things up throughout scripture, I'm not sure how much reassurance the announcement that the Holy Spirit would come upon her was to Mary. And then finally, the acceptance of the prophetic call. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your will. A prophetic call to a teen girl. Mary was going to need a song to keep her going. And maybe she knew just the one. She runs to her cousin Elizabeth's home. And that first struck me this year in 2020 as bittersweet. Or like when you're watching TV or a movie these days and people are together or in one another's homes or in a crowded place, Mary runs to her cousin Elizabeth's home and enters. And Elizabeth, an older woman now with child, is the first one to recognize not only Mary and her role as prophet, but also the child in her womb for who he is. And in the vulnerability of that moment, a moment where she and her child are seen, Mary shares with Elizabeth the song that will keep her going. And friends, it ain't an innocent song. It's a song of teenage girl rebellion. I'm not talking teen girl angst, I'm talking teen girl revolution. 
uh, like what Teen Vogue has been putting out the last four years. Go and Google Teen Vogue later if you don't know what I'm talking about. It's the song, it's a bold and assertive. It's filled with self-love and self-worth that is enviable for probably most teen girls and filled with the assurance of God's love. With all my heart, I glorify the Lord in the depths of who I am. I rejoice in God, my savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored because the mighty one has done great things for me. And then we get to the part about economic and political revolution. Did you catch that? He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty handed. This is the song that will keep Mary going through labor and delivery away from home in the barn of a stranger through losing her preteen child in the streets of Jerusalem, through the strange stories he told and the miracles he performed and the words he said that both comforted and challenged, through his terrible death, through the revolution that came next of a community on fire with the same Holy Spirit that had come to her. This is the song that will keep Mary going. A song that Mary probably had on her heart from a young age. It is the song of another young mother, Hannah, the mother of the prophet Samuel. Mary kept this song and made it her own. This is a song too that Luke knows will keep his community as well through persecution by the Roman Empire, through occupation, through economic and political oppression. This is a freedom song. It's a song of joy in the depths of who I am. I rejoice in God, my savior. This joy, this deep human thriving that can happen in the midst of oppression when people are inspired to raise their voice and declare their self-worth. This week in the weekly email, I invited you to watch with me the movie that's free to watch on YouTube called Following the Ninth in the Footsteps of Beethoven's Final Symphony. And it is, of course, about Beethoven's famous Ninth Symphony. The most famous section of the symphony is what is more commonly known as the Ode to Joy. It is based on a poem by Friedrich Schiller and was one of the first symphonies to include a chorus. Here's a bit of the description of the film from their website. It says, written in 1824 near the end of Beethoven's life, the Ninth Symphony was composed by a man with little to be thankful for. Sick, alienated from almost everyone and completely deaf, Beethoven had never managed to find love nor create the family he'd always wanted. And yet despite this, he managed to create an anthem of joy that embraces the transcendence of beauty over suffering. Celebrated to this day for its ability to heal, repair and bring people together across great divides, the ninth has become an anthem of liberation and hope that has inspired many from around the world. I'm going to share with you the movie trailer. Everything will pass and the world will perish, but the Ninth Symphony will remain. It enters your bloodstream and then changes who you are. This is just unstoppable momentum, like a star whirling through space. From Tiananmen Square, where it was played over the loudspeakers during the revolution. Which created an uh, ambiance of hope for us to the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin, where it was played when the wall fell down. I wish every person on this planet could experience this moment. It seems to express most completely what human beings are struggling for, what's possible for mankind. Pinochet took the power and began a very 
dark time. One day I heard the Ninth Symphony. It was us having the colorful butterfly in our heart. It was fantastic. It was uh, hope. That disaster tsunami reunited the Japanese people. What happened is just like Daiku, Daiku concert. People became brothers. The Ode to Joy has been the keep going song around the world during times of oppression and uprising and tragedy. As you saw in the video uh, at Tiananmen Square in 1989, students played the ninth over loudspeakers as the army came in to crush their struggle for freedom. And in Chile, women living under the Pinochet dictatorship sang the ninth at torture prisons where men inside took hope when they heard their voices. As the Berlin Wall came down in December 1989, it collapsed to the sound of Leonard Bernstein conducting Beethoven's Ninth as an ode to freedom. And in Japan, each December the Ninth is performed hundreds of times often with 10,000 people in the chorus. The 250th anniversary of Beethoven's baptism happens to be this week. And the same Holy Spirit that was present in his baptism was also that was also present in his composing and was present many times over around the world as people sang out the ode to joy, a cry and hope and dream of thriving and worth in the midst of terrible times. My own personal experience with the ode to joy or joyful, joyful, as the tune appears in our hymnal, came after my mom's death 14 years ago. We were meeting with the pastor to plan uh, the funeral, heartbroken and numb after her death by suicide. And as we talked about hymns, the pastor who had been walking with my mom during the last few months suggested the hymn, Joyful, Joyful. And it wasn't a hymn that I had been thinking about or probably even ready for. But I don't think our hearts could have borne the slow longing of the usual funeral hymns like How Great Thou Art or Great Is Thy Faithfulness. In the depths of tragedy, we needed joy to carry us even if the words were beyond our understanding in the moment. And as the pastor reminded me, even as I was in seminary at the time, we needed to be reminded that death doesn't have the last word, that the power of the child and hope that Mary carried was the power of resurrection. And so we processed down the aisle to joyful, joyful, as the service began. And I asked the pastor if he would preach on Mary's Magnificat, the song of a mother that would keep going on. Friends, what is the song that is keeping you going these days? May it be a song of love, of hope, of peace, of deep joy, even in these days, especially in these days. And if you need to borrow a song, I know that Mary will lend you hers. With all my heart, I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God, my Savior. Thanks be to God. Amen.
We now join together in a litany of what we believe. In times when humanity disappoints, perhaps when even our own thoughts and behaviors disappoint, it is an important act to call out, name, and claim the consequences of our wrongs. And in times of distress, it is a prophetic act to call out, name, and claim our belief in the promise of joy. I invite you to join with me. I believe that we have sometimes been silent in the face of injustice, and I believe that we are capable of raising our voices and insisting on goodness for all. I believe that we have been afraid of feeling deeply, making our joy small, and I believe that the deep joy of community can always be present, even in hard times. I believe that sometimes we wonder if we can make a difference and I believe that small acts of kindness and help do make a real difference. We believe even when we are discouraged. We believe that when we are discouraged, raising our voices for justice will offer us joy. Now we turn to our time of offering and opportunities to fill the night with love. I'd invite you to send your offering to 3000 East 12 Mile in Warren, Michigan, uh, 49092, four, that should be 48092, 48092, <laughs> something was wrong, or firstofwarren.com slash give. Friends, freely we have received, and so freely let us give. I want to thank you uh, on behalf of the deacons and our mission team and PW for giving so generously to our Christmas outreach opportunities. I think I have counted at least 28 Kohl's gift cards in so far for us, our partners at Second Mile Center. And the team took over a huge load for the food drive yesterday to Lakeshore um, Presbyterian Church. And the deacons have been working hard on the Christmas basket. So we thank you for contributing all that you have to those efforts. We'll have our longest night service, which is a service of healing and hope on the longest night on December 21st at 7 p.m. You could find it on Facebook Live if you don't really want to be uh, involved in the service, if you just want to receive, and that's okay. Um, I'll also put it up on our website um, it'll, at 7 p.m. Or you can come onto Zoom and that link will be sent out. And there will be a time at the end of the service, the service is pre-recorded, but there'll be a time at the end of the service on Zoom to have a personal prayer with a, a pastor or a lay leader in the congregations. And this year we're partnering with First United Methodist of Warren and my colleague in ministry, Pastor Melissa over at First United Methodist. So we give thanks for that. Um, this Wednesday, we have our Bible study at 7 p.m. We are continuing in our books of book of Acts with the Holy Spirit at work. We invite you to join us for that. The Zoom link is in the weekly email. If you're not getting that, just let us know and we can put you on the list. And Mary Jo, if you could um, share a little bit about this new opportunity. Yes. Um, during this time, and we, we've talked about how you know, what brings us joy and what songs bring us joy during this service, but sometimes it's okay not to be okay. And this year has taught us that it, nothing is okay right now. And for some of us, we're having more of a difficult time, you know, not being able to be with our families, um, not being able to do the things that we normally do, not being able to be in person in church. And so on the 15th, which is this Tuesday, um, we will have a safe space mental health check-in. And we're gonna do this the third Tuesday of every month. And it's just a place where we can come together to vent, cry, scream, or just sit quietly. Um, and there's no judgment, just, the care, just caring and support. So I encourage you, if you need to talk something out or you just want to come and support others to come and join us, um, the link for Zoom will be in the 
uh, Monday newsletter. Um, so I hope to see you there and it's at 7 p.m. Thank you. Thanks, Mary Jo. Um, we have our evening prayer on Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. on Facebook Live um, this week. So tomorrow I am going to be sharing my five favorite Advent and Christmas hymns. And it was like torture trying to figure out my five favorite. But um, I have what I got for tomorrow. So if you'd like to come at 8 p.m. on Facebook Live, I'll be there sharing my favorite hymns. And also it, um, we'll be entering a time of prayer as well. After worship today, we have a special Hanging of the Greens Fellowship Hour. Um, I received pictures from a few of you for of your beautifully decorated homes. Um, and this is Mary Smith's home, which is lovely. Thank you, Mary, for sending in the picture. Um, but if you are, have the capability of touring us around your home on Zoom, you can stay and show us some pictures from your home or some video as well. So we'd invite you to stay or just stay and see what else, see how other people decorated this year. Friends, I'd invite you to get in a comfortable position of rest. I invite you to get as quiet and still as you can. I invite you to take a deep breath and a deep listening posture, perhaps eyes closed or fixed on a candle as we prepare for a time of prayer. I'd invite you to place any prayer requests that you have in the comments or in the chat so we can lift up the prayers of our community. Let us join together in prayer. Oh God, you have called us to follow in the way of the one who was anointed to bring good news to the poor, release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to let the oppressed go free. Empower us to be faithful disciples of Jesus. In this season of Advent, help us discern where you are already at work to renew and repair your good but broken creation. Help us to trust that your future even now is coming to realization in our midst. Enable us to stand in solidarity with those who have been marginalized in our world. Help us to lift up and listen to voices long silenced. And as we give ear to the hopes and fears, 
Help us to join together to rebuild and restore your world on the foundation of the justice you envision for us in Christ. We pray also for the world of nations, especially for those places where violence is wreaking havoc upon human lives and your good creation. We pray for global solidarity as we continue to grapple with a raging pandemic. We pray for healthcare workers around the world as they tend to the sick and for all who are desperately ill and their families. We pray for those in our communities who have lost jobs, revenue, health care, and loved ones during this relentless public health challenge. Help us to be agents of your love and care to those who are suffering. We pray especially for wise discernment by our nation's elected leadership, that they might work together constructively to find ways to aid those most afflicted. We pray to the prayers of this gathered community. We give thanks for all those who contributed to the Christmas outreach. We pray for safe travels for Lillian and Loveland. We give thanks and uh, prayers of hope for the COVID vaccine being made available. We pray for Bob's brother, Dave, um, and we pray for peaceful transition of the presidency. Kevin, are there other prayers on Facebook? Not at this time. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray together, unmuted, if you would like, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name, thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come, come. It will be done, will be done. done. on earth and on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us, give us our, daily, our daily, bread. daily bread. And give us our debts as we as forgive, we forgive our, debtors. our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver, deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, kingdom glory and the power forever. and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our carol of resistance is joyful, joyful. We adore thee. The Ninth Symphony. Friends, we wait for justice, but we do not work. We do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wait to work to heal. We wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. 
We wait for peace, but we do not wait to work to eliminate hatred. And so my friends, like the bells ringing out the news that God is ever present with us, fill the night left by sadness with messages of joy. Go into your lives humming the tunes that keep joy alive in you and that spur you on in your work of justice and reconciliation. I invite you now to raise your voices and repeat after me, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Amen.